U.S. soldiers charged with war crimes walk free after Trump pardoned two of them and restored the rank of the other, in spite of the Pentagon advising him not to. I'm Imran Garda, and today's newsmaker is the controversy over Donald Trump's presidential pardons. When the Commander-in-Chief pardons members of the military, those exonerations are typically reserved for non-violent crimes like draft dodging or desertion, not those found guilty of the premeditated murder of an unarmed man or acts of indecency like posing with a severed head. But Donald Trump is not your typical president. Washington insiders say his mind was already made up to pardon three servicemen earlier this month before his Secretary of Defense tried to talk him out of it. The scandal has led to the ouster of the Navy secretary and has divided public opinion. On one side, you have those who argue the men deserve a second chance because their acts are forgivable when committed in the fog of war. The other says that is no reason to break the battlefield's rules of engagement. Heydar Abbasi introduces us to this story's main players and where they stand when it comes to the law. The U.S. president has defied the Pentagon. Going against the advice of his military, Donald Trump has intervened in the cases of war crimes. He's pardoned two soldiers and restored the rank of a Navy SEAL to another. Clint Lawrence was serving a 19-year prison sentence for ordering his soldiers to fire on three unarmed Afghan men in 2012. Two of them were killed. Matthew Goldstein was charged with the murder of an unarmed Afghan man that he believed was a bomb maker. His trial was scheduled for next year. And Trump reversed the demotion of Edward Gallagher, who was acquitted of murder but convicted for posing with a severed head of a Daesh terrorist in Iraq. Trump's pardon of the men has caused tensions between the Department of Defense and the White House. The Pentagon has warned the amnesty could make it more difficult for them to hold personnel accountable. Military advisors also say the decision would erode the trust of US allies hosting American troops. Among them is this man, the now former Secretary of the Navy, Richard Spencer. He was forced to resign on Sunday after trying to prevent Gallagher from being pardoned. Writing in his resignation letter, Spencer wrote, the rule of law is what sets us apart from our adversaries. This isn't the first controversial amnesty approved by Trump. In May, the president gave clemency to the soldier Michael Behenna, who was convicted of murdering an Iraqi prisoner. He also pardoned Lewis Scooter Libby, an advisor in the George W. Bush administration during the Iraq war. He was convicted of perjury and obstruction of justice in 2007. So what impact will this amnesty have on the U.S. military and the rules of engagement? And has the U.S. president undermined the rule of law? Haider Abbasi, The Newsmakers. To discuss this, let's go to our panel. Richard Painter joins us from Minneapolis. He was the White House's chief ethics lawyer under George W. Bush and is now a law professor at the University of Minnesota. In Washington, D.C. is Democratic strategist Jessica Deloach and Republican political commentator John Burnett is in New York. Good to have you all on the program. Richard Painter, why do you think the president has done this? Well, I don't know. Uh, this shouldn't be a Republican versus Democratic uh, thing. President Bush would not have done this. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of soldiers deployed abroad, and uh, the vast, vast majority of them are very brave Americans, law-abiding soldiers who are defending liberty. We have a very few, you're always going to have a very few people who are criminals in any group, including in our soldier uh, abroad. And uh, these men committed serious crimes. And this is a danger uh, to the United States, to our military, to our soldiers abroad, who are putting their lives at risk, seeking cooperation from our allies and in the countries where they are deployed, that we have a few people behave in this way. They're putting their 
colleagues in arms in danger, and they are also destroying the reputation of the United States. We go from a situation where the United States in 1945 to 1948 hung war criminals, German and Japanese war criminals, and now we have the president of the United States pardoning war criminals in the United States military. This is destroying our reputation abroad and is endangering our national security simply because he wants to impress people on Fox News. It's very, very troubling that this has happened and that he has also gone outside the usual channels to do it, trying to engineer mm -hmm. the, uh, these trials in the military and interfere instead of allowing the system to play itself out. John Burnett, you're not listening to somebody on the other side of this who's a lefty who's anti-war. This is somebody who worked within the Bush administration during the Iraq war, and he's saying this is crazy. Don't you agree? Well, you know, with all due respect to President Bush, uh, he did get us into a longstanding war and conflict. Uh, this president has showed strength. He's also uh, supported the military, both health-wise, as well as trying to de-escalate tension abroad, as well as making sure that, you know, he does everything possible to boost morale. Look, yeah, but these what are men and but women what he's also saying, that John, are, John, what he's also saying is that you can do another Abu Ghraib and get away with it if you want to. That's what he's telling the well, servicemen. What, what, what do you, what do you, as, far, as far as the as far as the Gallagher case, he did not overturn the conviction. What he wanted was to make sure that this person can retire with his pen, his trident pen. There was major pushback by Spencer, and and Spencer actually, if you, if you really want to talk about the chain of command and respect and being an example for our uh, servicemen and women, you don't undermine the president of the United States. You don't buck his order. He, there's, there are many commanders, but there is only one commander in chief. His actions at, at the senior level in our military uh, branch is not a good example for our servicemen and women. And we're gonna talk about Spencer in a few minutes time, and I'll circle back to it. But the point, John, are you okay with the pardoning of somebody who's holding up a severed head and boasting about it just the way ISIS does. That's what they do. Well, the, the thing is, I don't think there's anyone on the right, left, or any, even the political, politically agnostic would, would hail this as a good example, uh, not even the president. However, the president is one of second chances, and I believe that, you know, in his heart of hearts, he did not want to strip this individual that, of the pen that they earned, but not overturn the conviction. I think that's a fair balance, and that's what the president was trying to uh, strike here. Okay, and John, and what about the others who were convicted of murder? That's okay as well? Well, the thing is, you know, the president, again, he is, he's, he's the commander in chief. He made that decision. Okay, uh, many of the But you're uh, appealing to authority. You're saying he's. As well as the pundits okay, but don't you're say, agree with you're it. You're saying he's the president, so we've got to follow orders. That's hardly a great argument in a democracy, is it? Well, 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 I, I, well the thing is, is that I, I clearly laid it out that I think there's people on the right and left that disagree with the president. I'm quite sure if you look at history, look at what pre President Obama done, what, pr what uh, President Bush and Clinton, in terms of the people that they've actually uh, decided to pardon, whether in the military or outside the military, everyone could, could uh, disagree with the decisions, but that falls within the okay. president's remit and his authority. Okay, Jessica Deloach, I wanted you to have an opportunity to listen to John for a couple of minutes so you understand fully where he's coming from. Anything in John's argument that you accept? Not really, no, because, well, let me begin with, it's perfectly fine to disagree with the president of the United States and to hold him accountable for the bad decisions that he makes. I, I can't help but think about uh, how easy it is to get people to go along with uh, certain types of authority figures just because they feel that that's the proper thing to do. The point you made about how uh, ISIS behaves the same way, why are we saying that it's okay for our soldiers to behave that way is exactly spot on. Uh, you know, pardons after wars are not uncommon but they're usually used to show forgiveness and to help heal a nation, not to overlook the fact that we've had soldiers who have taken it upon themselves to act out in ways that are absolutely despicable. And they do so wearing 
our colors, wearing our badges. They're representing our nation. And they didn't stop to think about that before they acted out and before they murdered innocent people, some mostly innocent people. And then to take photographs with a severed head. I mean, I'm sorry, but it feels a little wacky to be worried about someone being able to retire with a pen when they made the decision to act in a terrible manner. Those people did not deserve the pardons they received, but I'm not surprised that they did receive them from Donald Trump because he likes people who act out. He doesn't even respect rules. And so having these people not follow orders apparently is perfectly fine by him. And these are the same types of things that I would expect someone like Vladimir Putin to uh, mm. think is perfectly fine and behave the same way as well. So this is all very strange to me. This isn't a part of an issue. It's, it's truly a sad time for our country. Uh, Richard Painter, a couple of things that Trump said that I want you to respond to. The first, a tweet where he said, we train our boys to be killing machines, then prosecute them when they kill. That's as the commander in chief tweeting that. And in the pardon statement, the president saying, when our soldiers have to fight for our country, I want to give them the confidence to fight. As a former White House ethics lawyer, unpack that for me, Mr. Painter. Well, first of all, we're not talking about our boys. We're talking about our men and women in the armed services who fight to defend our country and pursue it to the laws of war, the rules of war. And you do not kill unarmed civilians. You do not hold up a severed head uh, as would an ISIS fighter. That is un-American. Those people should be thrown out of the military and put in prison. That is what President Bush would do. This is unacceptable for any president. Who are we dealing with? We're dealing with a president who dodged the draft, fake bone spur, in order not to go to Vietnam. And then he turns around and uh, goes after John McCain and makes fun of John McCain for being captured, for, for serving six years in a North Vietnamese prison, being tortured. And Donald Trump, this is the moral character of the man we're dealing with, a draft dodger of the White House who makes fun of our prisoners of war and then pardons the worst war criminals in the United States military, putting our soldiers abroad in danger and destroying our reputation uh, in the world. John Burnett, response to that? Look, again, I don't condone this, this type of behavior, but, you know, my, my two uh, fellow panelists, they, they, they very clearly point out their discontent with President Trump. But when I look back to re recent history, I can find no greater example to undermine our, our great men and women uh, uh, in our armed forces than the action of President Obama supplying the, the number one state of, uh, sponsor of terrorism with over one billion dollars. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Even we're not here to talk about the Curry Iran. Under, we're not, we're oh, not oh, here to talk about the Iran deal. Okay, okay. Uh, give a give, finish, a, give a comparable finish. example, that's John. Unfair. John, that's that's John, unfair. John, give a comparable no, no, that, example. That if you had to say, that John, is a comparable. Oh, hold on, John. That is a comparable example. We're talking. Give a give a comparable example. Say the pardoning of Bergdahl or something like that. Come on. We are under no. You, you asked me on this show for my opinion. Let me give it. <laughs> we are talking about undermining the morale of the troops. Okay. You don't that have to is lie undermining about Obama. the morale of the I'm troops not by sit funding terrorists. To lie about Obama and, and, to defend Donald no, Trump. No, 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 it's but ridiculous. The, but, the, but the point, but the point okay. is, finish up, John. But, but see that that see see that You're that's deep state talking Obama. right now. The point is, I'm not tr I'm not trying to defend President Trump's okay. decision. What I'm what I'm trying to do is respect his decision. But at the same time, if we're going to talk about undermining our, our men and women in service, By let's have a holistic about discussion okay. about this. Okay. The, okay. The, but these, listen. No, no, this is not lying. Listen, you're not, a, not, you're not an expert on the Iran nuclear deal, so that's why we didn't call well, you on to talk, talk no, about No, no, but that. let's talk about ethics. Okay. We're not talking about, okay. we're not talking listen, about the, the nuclear deal. What we're talking about is, re, is sponsoring okay. terrorism, giving them cash, and then the Secretary of State saying that that cash will likely end up in the hands that's of the terrorists, okay. the same listen, people that we listen, are fighting. John. John John, this is where we That's swap you lie. out for... You repeat it over and over again. Okay. There's nothing to do with this. Okay, so, John, this is where we swap it's you not, out for an Air Force colonel. Listen, I don't have John. to listen to lies. I'm not here to listen to okay. a bunch of lies Mr. about Mr. Painter, we're going to come back to you in a moment. Let's say goodbye now to John Burnett. We thank you very much for your time, sir. We're going to bring in Colonel Rob Maness now. He's a retired United States Air Force colonel and a former U.S. 
Senate candidate. Good to have you on the program, sir. You've listened to the conversation preceding you. I know that you're more partial to President Trump's decision, but I'm guessing you don't fully agree with John Burnett. Well, you know, I would say I agree with all four, all the other three of your panelists in this, is that this should not be a partisan issue, Imran, and thanks for having me on. As Also, as the only panelist here that's actually commanded in the wars these three individuals fought in and uh, has held court-martial authority as a commander, I'm very disturbed on what's going on with the subordinates of the president of the United States. In our system, the president of the United States is also the commander in chief, and he has a specific role at the top of the chain of command to play in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And he has not committed anything unlawful from what I can tell. I've looked at all three cases. Right. He did not pardon uh, Mr. Gallagher. Uh, he commu basically commuted his sentence by giving his rank back and wants him to retire with his right. his trident pin. Right. Uh, he, he pardoned uh, Goldstein, who was never convicted of anything and uh, has been proven innocent by several different boards, and now it came back up a few years ago. Right. And Mr. Lawrence was on his second day in combat as a young platoon leader when he made a really bad decision and... I think that's sure, but he still, he fired on he, yeah, he, he fired on that. unarmed men, right? But I want to I want to bring it now to the Navy Secretary that were Spencer. They thought to be combatants. Okay. She thought they were combatants. No, they they were proved to be innocent. Yes, innocent civilians. That's why they went through this two, whole process, two of right? The three were proved to be actually be Taliban, but that's okay. Spencer tried to find a compromise. He said the guy can keep his trident, but leave it to us to handle. That wasn't good enough for the president, right? Let's have a look at his resignation letter. And I want you to respond to this, Rob. So in the resignation letter, the US Navy Secretary Spencer wrote that the rule of law is what sets us apart from our adversaries. I no longer share the same understanding as the commander in chief who appointed me in regards to the key principle of good order and discipline. I cannot in good conscience obey an order that I believe violates the sacred oath I took. Rob, it sounds as if the president is not listening to the experts. You appeal to your own expertise, being a military man, the only military man on the panel here. Why isn't the president listening to his military men? I believe the president, uh, in his own right, as the head of the military justice system, uh, reviewed each of these cases in detail. And there are specific issues with all three cases that I don't think we have to go uh, time to go into here. I mean, in Gallagher's case, the prosecution was actually dismissed by the judge for prosecutorial misconduct and actually doing electronic surveillance on the defense team. So uh, that's there are certain issues with those. But let's get back to Mr. Spencer. And what he didn't say in his letter is identify what the unlawful order he was given that would cause him to violate his oath of office. And of course, he's talking about violating his oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The president has taken very lawful, thoughtful action here, and, and he's given directives, right. and it's and you don't believe it hurts and the military. mutinous okay. for a secretary of the Navy right. and an admiral right. to publicly dispute it. That you don't believe it's just mutinous. I want to take something. That is mutiny okay, in the it. United States okay. Armed Forces. Okay. It challenges civilian control of the U.S. military, That's which interesting. is what has kept this country okay. great and free and liberty fighting and defending for 240 plus years. Richard Painter, you concerning. see it as harming the military, and we've got Colonel Rob Maynard saying, no, this is mutiny. That's what's harming the military. Well, first, the president's uh, appointees or Senate confirmed uh, in the Pentagon, the Secretary of the Navy, uh, and the Secretary of Defense, I mean, these are civilians who are put in charge. Uh, and it's critically important that when they disagree with the president, that they say so. If we had had more deliberation during Vietnam and during the Iraq War and other prior conflicts, we might very well have pursued objectives that were more strategically in line with what we wanted to do, and we would have avoided uh, some uh, very tragic uh, developments. It's important to have disagreement and dissent, particularly at the highest ranks, where you have civilian employees uh, appointed by the president, confirmed by the Senate. Uh, I agree that people in the field 
who are actually fighting in the field uh, should not be telling the president, no, I won't obey your order, what uh, General MacArthur did. Uh, in uh, Korea that upset President Truman. I mean, you can go too far with dissent. But uh, we don't want to have a world where the president, particularly this president, who shows no respect for John McCain, who was imprisoned and tortured for six years, uh, says, oh, you got captured. I mean, if we have a president with that attitude, uh, he has the right to be president. But it's critically important to have disagreement and dissent if he is engaged in, if he's making decisions that jeopardize our soldiers abroad. Jessica Deloach, bringing it back to the message, in the past when U.S. soldiers uh, were proved to have done terrible things, the argument was, we follow the Geneva Conventions, these are rotten apples. Is that not the case anymore, is that, or is that undermined by these pardons? Well, I do believe that it is important to note that the majority of people who serve in the United States military do so with honor, they're, they're courageous people, and they do follow the rules. They follow the rules because they respect the country, they respect the people they serve, and they want to live up to the oath that they took. These people who break those orders, who go out on their own to engage in ways that we would never, ever condone, those people do not deserve to be given a free pass for that. There is, it doesn't matter if you're on your second day of service. Well, nobody's been given a free pass. Come on, Imran, that's not right. Uh, Gallagher wasn't pardoned. He was convicted for doing something that violated the rules of engagement. Nobody in this really group of people like has been that? given a free pass. Please? Lieutenant yeah, Lawrence okay, spent no, six sir, years in jail for making a bad decision in combat. You haven't served in combat, madam, and you don't understand what's going on. These men are honorable, and they have paid the price. They have dearly paid the price. So it's just not wrong. That is Democrat no misinformation, and I'm not going to sit here and listen to it. I'm not going to listen to it. They do their jobs, and you are wrong. this wasn't a Democrat versus Republican thing. You are absolutely wrong. You are wrong. These men, these men are paying the price. Gallagher was convicted. Nobody overturned his conviction. It's time to let him retire. right now, and that's a very bad look. Why don't you live up to the oath that you took and hold people to the same standard? I am living up to the oath that I took. I'm not going to disgusting. let you say that these men disgusting. are war it's criminals when they enough. clearly have issues with each and every case. And let's talk about this in a professional manner that follows the law. The President of the United States in our system that gave lawful orders the to law. the Secretary of the Navy and Admiral Green, who is a military officer, and they both have caused public disturbance of insubordination and mutiny, Wait, and they should be the ones being brought to trial. That, that, the, that causes that causes that causes the morale of our war fighting men and women to drop and significantly. About what they are damaging the United States of America. I serve. I served for 30 years. Okay, I Colonel, commanded America. Colonel, give it back. Colonel, could you, know, could you give Jessica a chance to finish know. her point? You know what? I don't know. Colonel, know. Colonel yeah. Manus. Yeah. Colonel Manus. Okay, I'm Jessica. Jessica, go ahead. 30 seconds, please. Jessica, Thank finish you. your point. So what I'm saying is, when you have soldiers who represent our country and they serve abroad, they are, they are the message that we're sending to the world. When they engage in bad behaviors, when they murder innocent people, I promise you, that has a greater effect on the way we are perceived in the world than what happens within an administration among appointed officials. I'm not saying it's okay for everyone to run roughshod over President Trump, but when you're appointed, you are right. also expected to be honest and to give your expert opinion. When people pose beside severed heads and go out and murder people and they think it's funny, which by the way, if you did read the cases, you would know that one of those people in particular definitely went above and beyond when it came to being an absolute deplorable human being, he made the decision to murder people. So you tell me what matters more to the world, the way those people act, and if they receive pardons or any sort of leniency for those behaviors, what right. that says to other militaries around the world is, oh, well, I guess that's fair. I guess we can all just misbehave too and then forgive people for mistreating prisoners. If that's the world you want to live in, I'm sorry, but there are plenty of us who are going to stand up against that. Colonel, so, Colonel, there's, okay, Colonel, there's a, there's a minute left on the program. I want you to respond to retired military judge Gary Solis, who served as an officer in Vietnam, who said the actions of the president have undermined military justice. Your reaction to the that? The actions, 
the actions of the Secretary of the Navy and Admiral Green and probably more senior leaders in the United States Navy are the ones that are undermining civilian control of the military, undermining the morale of the armed forces of the United States while we're engaged in combat. And Mr. Gallagher was convicted of holding the severed head. It was not overturned, and he should be punished for it, and he has been. Now, the President of the United States has made a decision. Look, I didn't agree with President Obama on the Bergdahl case or the the Chelsea Manning case or any of those, but I'd never questioned his authority to do that. And that's what's happening here. And that is no, undermining the entire right. armed forces, okay. the structure of the national security of the United States. And I can't stand by and watch okay. it without trying to say something well, as I'm somebody who's well, served I'm glad you did say something. peace and war. I'm glad you did say something and you joined the conversation. Thank Rob Maynus, Richard Painter, Jessica Deloach, it's been a pleasure having you all on the Newsmakers. I thank you very much for joining us. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.